So we're talking about finding mass, flow rate, and conservation of mass. Okay, so this is, is roughly what it's telling us. Now, as I've alluded to up here, if, if, if I've got a steady flow control volume, and I'm not going to go into definition of that. We've talked about that multiple times. Find it in another video or look it up or ask me. But send me an email if you're not sure. I'm not going to hash it out here. For steady flow, uh, a lot of texts will call this steady state. That means everything becomes constant with respect to time. I'm on the screen, right? Loud pop. Yeah, I'm on the screen. So everything becomes constant with respect to time. For steady flow, this goes to zero. So that tells me that the rate of mass in is equal to the rate of mass out. And if it's a single inlet and a single outlet, I don't even have to differentiate. It's the same m dot for both. Okay. Uh, and we'll do that sometimes because we'll and typically we'll encounter a lot of control volumes where I've got a single inlet and a single outlet, and a lot of really we'll, con we'll we'll encounter a lot of control volumes that are operating at steady flow. Okay, what do we do with that? Well, again, the the whole purpose of this exam is to test you on your ability to simplify the first law to any closed stationary system or simplify the first law to any steady flow control volume. So again, how do you study for the exam? Well, find problems where it's a closed stationary system or steady flow control volume. Write, go through this procedure and write the first law expression and then check that against some solution manual you trust and see if you got that right. Okay. Um, that's a really good way to study for the exam. It's not everything. You still need to be able to use property tables and still need to be, do be able to do algebra and use a calculator. But that is a huge chunk of it. Go through this procedure for anything. So let's talk about first law for steady flow control volume. Again, first law tells us, and we'll just write the, the rate form, the rate of energy in minus the rate of energy out is equal to the change in the energy of the system with respect to time. Now remember, the energy of the system represents the internal energy, the kinetic energy, and the potential energy of the system. Okay, that's what those guys represent. So in, in a closed stationary system back over here, remember this side, we said the kinetic energy and the potential energy of the system doesn't change, so the only thing changes is the internal energy of the system. Okay, so this is for the entire system. Um, and again, if it's steady flow, let's use a green pen here. If it's steady flow, that tells me this goes to zero. All right, so for steady flow, this whole term goes to zero, and so that just tells me that the rate of energy in minus the rate of energy out is equal to zero. And then we say, all right, well, what are the ways to draw any mass or energies crossing the boundary? So what are the ways that energy can come in? Well, it could be power. That's the work rate. It could be a heat rate. So that's W dot M plus Q dot N plus M dot times, and this is, if you can squeeze a summation in there. You really need a summation in there. Right? This is a summation. Sorry. <laughs> if I was on a whiteboard, I'd erase this and redraw it. I am not. I apologize. Summation across all inlets, the mass flow rate times the enthalpy plus the kinetic energy. And I'm going to leave off the potential energy. You could write it. It's not going to hurt anything. But as we've seen, it's normally negligible. So I'm not going to add that in there. But the enthalpy and the kinetic energy. Now, why is it not a U value? Because it's flowing. It has a U value but it also has what causes it to flow. It doesn't flow spontaneously. It gets pushed by the pressure of the fluid upstream. So it's U plus PV. That gives me H. We talked about that extensively in a previous video. Go back and, and watch that. Um, email me if you're not sure which video that is, and I'll help you figure it out. But we've talked about why is it H here. Because it's flowing mass, we use an H value. Okay? The right-hand side is where the U is. Right, that's here, and this is going to zero because it's for the entire system and it's steady. So, all the energy in, heat rate, work rate, or power, plus
plus the rate at which energy of mass comes in, and then minus all those terms going out. So minus the power output, anything extracting mechanical energy out, the rate at which thermal energy is leaving, that's the heat rate out, minus the total for all of the outlets, the energy of the mass going out. So it's the mass flow rate times its enthalpy and its kinetic energy. That whole sum is equal to zero because, again, if it's a steady flow control volume, the change in the energy of the system over time is zero. Right? Now, it doesn't mean there's not, there is going to be a change from the energy of the mass into the energy of the mass out. That's normally really what we're after is what is this and what does it end up doing? But again, the procedure is the same. Draw your system, draw all the energies of mass crossing the boundary, add the in, subtract the outs, that's the left hand side of the equation. The right hand side is equal to the energy change for the system. If it's a steady flow control volume, we set that equal to zero. Right? Hmm. We can simplify as let's say, that's it, but now there, there is for steady flow control volume, with one inlet and one outlet. Now you can call these in and out, and I don't mind that at all. I'm lazy, and I'm going to call them one and two. And a lot of times, we'll have a device where we'll have one inlet, we'll call him one, one outlet, we'll call him two. Um, so what happens, the conservation of mass looks like this. The mass flow rate in is equal to the mass flow rate out, and there's no reason to differentiate them. So conservation of mass just says that's just m dot. And we figure out how to find that back over here. Okay, And so if this is true, so it's just a single inlet and a single outlet. It's the same m dot between them, so we're just going to factor it out of the whole thing. And so that just becomes this. The power input plus the heat rate in minus the power output minus the heat rate out. So these are all rates. They all have dots plus the difference between the rate of the energy of the mass in minus the rate of the energy of the mass out. And that is simplified based on an enthalpy change. And it's not uncommon that we'll have a kinetic energy change. But again, this is in minus out. And I'm, not, I'm neglecting the potential energy change. You're welcome to add it in there. Most of the time, it's microjoules. It's not significant. So we normally don't even worry about it. The kinetic energy may be insignificant. That depends on your problem, depends on your device. And we talked about, I've given you a, a set of steps and, and questions that I ask whether I need, even need to worry about the kinetic energy or not. Okay, so I'm not going to rehash those. Those exist in previous lectures. <clears throat> Guys, I think that's it. I think that gets you um, hopefully where you need to be for an exam. I've made a list here. Now that, guys, this is no guarantee this is inclusive. Look through the homework that I've assigned. Um, the topics covered in the homework problems will show up on the exams. It'll be water, R134, and some ideal gas, probably air, but I mean, we may use some other substance, okay? Um, I'm, I'm sitting here, well, I've got, I've got about five minutes, and I don't want to just ramble, but I don't, I can't think of anything else. It's not to say that's everything. Okay? Don't write me and say, Steve, you didn't talk about this in the review. Why'd you put it on the exam? Well, it showed up in the homework and it's in the chapter and you're responsible for that information. Um, but this is, these are the things that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm not intentionally leaving something out, but I'm not going to promise you that this is everything. But this is most everything that uh, the really critical stuff. Okay. Uh, if you have questions, send me an email. If you don't mind it being public, just write me a comment. Some of you guys have done that, and I'm, I'm happy to, to write comments back. If you're a guest, you're not in my class, you're welcome to write me a comment. Uh, I will do my best to get back to you. I understand my students get priority, okay? but uh, I will try to answer your questions as well. Hopefully you find this helpful. Okay. I, I, again, I seriously hope you find this helpful. and um, I'll, uh, As I said, I'll do about four videos for Chapter 6. Today, 
And then um, on Thursday, so after the exam, I'll post uh, the remainder of the Chapter 6 videos. And, um, and, and, and at some point between now and next Monday, um, go through the Chapter 6 videos because there will be a Chapter 6 homework, I think, is due Tuesday. Okay, so don't, don't let that sneak up on you. But look and see. I, I, I don't have the due date in front of me. Just be aware that Chapter 6 homework will come up before too long. Okay? All right, guys. Have a good one. Stay safe and healthy out there. And like I say, Chapter 6 videos coming after this. Lecture 15 videos after this.